Yo, Food Service Power Plant Network, what is up? I, uh, we're going to want someone to tell us if you can hear us and all is solid. There are people hopping on. Welcome to the first ever Food Service Power Plant Cooking Academy, uh, Culinary Academy or Cooking Class, wherever you want to call it. We've got George Van Riper here who is going to walk us through tonight some easy steak marsala. George, how the heck are you? I'm awesome, man. I'm really pumped. I, I'm i looking forward to this. I really am, Jason. I want to see something out of you tonight. I'm looking I, forward I, to it. I can't wait, brother. This is going to be so fun. I don't know that anyone has ever really given me like a cooking class, walk me through something start to finish. So um, I can't wait to do this. We'll get some of your expertise, some of your stories. Okay, we just got the good news. Can hear us both. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and by the way, we're using StreamYard tonight, so I can't actually see unless you go to StreamYard.com uh, forward slash Facebook and you enter your name. It's hard for me to see. So I will take. We will take all comments, and and uh, we appreciate it. You're giving us great feedback. If you've got questions for George along the way, throw them in the comments. And, you know, we're going to have time while we're cooking to chat back and forth. If you can answer any of your questions, uh, George, real quick, before we get going, we're going to start here in a second. Just just tell us how you're doing. We're, we're, you know, things are still a little bit unique out there. You're hanging in amidst everything. Yeah, I'm hanging in there, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, Thanksgiving week's given me a lot of gratitude lately. I'm just looking back at the year. Obviously, you know, people had tough years this year, but I got I got a lot to be thankful. You know, we're here together. dude. Look at us. Look at us, you know. Love it, buddy. So it's Love good. It. This is, you know, it's it's been fun. So looking forward to uh, doing this little demo with you. Good, buddy. Me too. Okay, so we're cooking tonight some easy steak marsala. If you got the ingredients at home, certainly give it a shot with us. Now, I George had me prep ahead of time. I think he prepped ahead of time too. So we've got, you know, we've got our spinach right here. We've got our sliced portobello. By the way, like so, I I called George or I texted him. I'm like, yep, I got the portobello. Just want to make sure I slice it the right way. He goes, yeah, you can get it sliced ahead of time in the store. Total veteran move right there. Total veteran move. <laughs> uh, we've got our chopped. You can see how I did. I do all right on the garlic. Yeah, great, great. Perfect. We've got some shallots. We've got some butter. We've got some uh, thyme. Put through some thyme in there for when we that. Got some salt and pepper. And we're going to rock and roll. So. Me someplace. Gazente. <laughs> it's me someplace. It's prep. It's you know the prep. It's good. Beauty. Awesome. awesome. Okay, sweet. <laughs> we, we are me someplace. Um, okay, so George, tell me. Where would you like us to start tonight? Where do we begin okay, tonight's festivities? So first, first is you're going to want to put the pan on the induction. That's That's number one. Done. And you want to get you're gonna want to get that nice and hot. I would put it at is it a one to two or one to ten setting? How how is it look? I can go. I can go. Um, I can go by temp or by number. So where do you want me to? I can go temp is easy. I mean, yeah, that works. Uh, just go to like three fifty four hundred. You're all you're doing is um, since you did purchase a ribeye, you're gonna confit a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the fat in a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And you're going to render down that fat. Okay. And you're going to use that fat as flavor. Oh, good. What are the chances that this creates a decent amount of smoke and we have to open all the windows, which we can handle? Um, it's a great possibility of that happening. I, I Again, I wouldn't put it on full blast. I think at 350, 400, you won't see a, a mass amount of smoke. But you do want to render down a little bit of that fat. Uh, so you can use it as flavor. Beautiful. I use fillets today, so I don't have to, you know, pull that out. Yeah. So I just have like little six to eight ounce fillets. You don't you have to do this process. It's really not needed. It's just kind of a cool technique that I've always done when cooking steaks in general. I love it. I've never even considered yeah. it. Yeah. It's just not to waste because when you're cooking a steak in a skillet or you're sauteing, you really don't, you're not able to render all that fat, obviously, because you're cooking it a lot faster. Yep. So yep. since you're not able to do that, you want to use that fat for something. So that's why I like to use, I like to conserve the meat regardless. So, George, I love it. Tell, tell us real quick, where did you, um, how did you get into cooking? Where did you get some of your, all these skills? 
Um, honestly, I started cooking like 10, 11 years old. My dad was always a great cook. It kind of something, my three sisters, I have three sisters, they're all good cooks. I don't know what it, what it's been, but it's, it's something that I, my creative energy is in the kitchen and that's yeah. kind of what I use. I think any creator is, you know, an artist in itself. So it's, uh, it's my art, so to speak. I, I love it, man. There's something about yeah. creating that. Um, I don't know when you realize, I think there's a creator in everyone, like everyone's got that creative yeah. bug. There was a long period of my life. I didn't believe I did. And then you just start flexing that muscle a little bit, figure out what brings you joy. So I love that this is your avenue. For sure. For sure. What, what do you think yours is? I mean, obviously you're bringing people together. So giving is definitely a trait that you have. Uh, yeah, I love, I love, um, lifting up i don't know creativity i i don't i can't sit inside a box very long like i always have to be thinking outside of it in whatever capacity whether it's at you know in my job at cow mill whether it's food service power plant stuff um it's just i don't know thinking of different ways to do it that maybe mean a little bit more to whomever we're offering it to whatever we're offering in terms of product in terms of compassion or empathy whatever all right now you're going to want to go ahead and <laughs> Oh, good that. lord! I think you rendered it. I can't see it. It looks like you rendered a good amount of fat off that, though. Good, awesome, awesome. All right, now go ahead and since it's pretty hot, you go yep. ahead and you drop. Oh, I gotta get hot too. I'm over worried about you. Um, go ahead and drop your steak in because it's gonna keep smoking if you don't have product in the skillet. There we go. There you go. All right, so I would turn it up just a little. Actually, you don't want to eat any more smoke. Just keep it the same. It's fine. It's fine. The, the the potential is so real for this to get really loud and so so that is a fatty ribeye for sure. <laughs> it's oh, all right. Yes. It's all right. It's all right. We're crushing it. Do I want more so olive just, oil? Should I keep putting olive oil in? Honestly, you're good on the olive oil because you used a lot of that fat. Wouldn't you say that that cast iron has a good amount of liquid in there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's doing pretty case, good. If that don't so so stop moving the steak. Oh, got it. Yep. Just let it let it be. Uh, you don't want to move the steak at all because it will take away from the sear. So what got you're going to do is you're going to take about. Let me turn mine up a little bit. I got to get in line with you here. So everybody um, at home. So remember, put the put the fillet right in the middle there. We're going to not move it around like I was doing. Uh, lesson number one, because we want to sear it, which is essentially just uh, the crispiness on the outside. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So uh, depending on how hot that pan, which is, I think it kind of slowed down a little bit. You might want to turn it up just a tad. Yep. All right. I'm throwing it to four zero zero. I was at three fifty. Okay. Okay. The smoke is totally uh, come down way less smoke. Yeah. You want, because it, there wasn't much, obviously the more product in the pan, the more it's going to take away that heat. Since you have only had a couple pieces of fat in there, it's going to get a lot hotter than it would if a big, you know, that's a what, 16 ounce ribeye right there. So, yep, yep, that, that's going to do it. Beautiful. So, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop mine in. All right. That looks great. And I'm going to let it sit. I got two fillets here because my fiance would kill me if I didn't make one for her. Oh, what a good so, man. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I usually go um, about two to three minutes on each side to get a nice sear on it, to get that meat nice and caramelized. And then yep. what I do is I flip it on the other side for the same amount of time. And then after okay. that, I bring the temperature down, like almost like I'm putting it in an oven. And I, I cook in about two to three minutes on the side, each side again. Okay. And then I remove it and let it rest. So on yeah. your end, would you say you what has it been about three minutes for you? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, I would maybe maybe stay with me then. Just uh flip when um I flip here because yep. I think it was a little bit lower in temperature when you originally put it down. Okay. We're we're just gonna just give us one second in here. I've got me, <laughs> Shannon, and Haley are all please just... apologize to your wife for me, really. No, I, I it's feel, all good. I feel this guilty is what, that. You're blowing it the wrong way, babe. Don't blow it this way. Towards the window. There we go. There we go. All right. So um, yeah. go ahead and flip yours. I think you're ready to flip. Beauty. There you go. Just there so you go. can see you it. You got it. You got it, dude. You got it. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Here we go. Now we're. <laughs> there we go. We, we almost lost half of it, but she's back. We're good. Okay. All right. So you got it in there. Let it sit. Yep. Yep. Oh, you're definitely getting a good amount of smoke there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip <laughs> mine as well. No, yep. I'm going to keep it going. Um, 
Turn it back down. It back. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. We're turning this baby down for a minute. Yep. You're good. You're good. You're good. Go ahead and turn it down to medium low. Medium low. Like okay. To like 300. It's fine. Done. Done. It's in, all right. All right. You're good. We're solid. Let it sit. Let it yep. sit. You're good. Taking now my I hands off the it. tools, George. I'm taking my hands back. off the tools. I would flip it back yep. after a minute. So okay. I'm going to flip on. So when you flip, you always want to flip it on an opposite side of where it was cooking prior to you flipping it. Say that again. When you flip a steak or any, honestly, any product, you don't want to flip it and put it in the exact same spot because that way you're getting a lot colder in that area. So you'd want to flip it around the outside of the pan or wherever you didn't make contact to prior. How about that? Okay, yeah. cool. So well, I think you're ready to flip now because you got it smoking hot. And I, I think we kind of have to take a little detour here. You got it. Okay, you go, oh, so no, here's I, would, I would leave it. I would leave it. Okay, okay we'll Sorry. leave it again. That's all right. I'm moving. It's hard to, I've never tried to do this through webinar or, uh, or, uh, or whatever this form is. Oh, yeah. So well, well we're both trying new stuff tonight. Yeah. So, no, definitely. everyone, hopefully, that's lesson number two. When you flip a piece of meat, put it in a different spot than where it was originally. It's, I mean, honest to gosh, I'm 42, and the things that are probably so elementary that I had no idea about. It is pretty, uh, not, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that, though, Jason. You, you'd be surprised. Okay. Okay. Um, You're making me feel good. Yeah. So, go ahead and, uh, since you do have that nice sear, obviously it's it's toned down quite a bit for you. That's a good induction burner. Whoever gave you that, <laughs> yeah, that my buddy, got really good. <laughs> it's it's on it. Yeah, we're using tonight. We've got my buddy Adam from Far Green. Let me borrow a Volrath one. Okay, take a look. That's pretty good. Now go ahead and flip it again. Okay, going back. And oh, go yeah. ahead and turn and turn down the temperature. Um, to about give or take, yeah, I, I'd keep it around 250. You're, you're wanting to really cook this at medium low at this point. Okay. So, at your house, if you're working off a normal um, electric range at the house, you would go ahead and you put it at medium low to cook for the rest of the time for about three minutes on each side. Okay, got it. And how thick was your ribeye? I couldn't really tell, so I couldn't base off the time with, with that. Was it about an well, inch, inch and a quarter? Yeah, it, it was about an inch. Between an inch and a quarter, an inch and an inch and a quarter. Um, I had the guy at the local grocery store help me pick it out. Okay. Oh, you just keep wanting to touch it, Jason. I swear. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to call you out. I got it. Um, so good. Okay. Okay. Real quick. Uh, oh, we got some comments here. What's up, dudes? I wish I could see who it was. I apologize. Uh, but what is up, friends? Odds of Jason fire alarm are plus 250. Uh, you're so right. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Uh, I need a Long Island iced tea. There's a story about me in Long Island iced teas, just for the record. The only okay. time I've ever been, uh, I don't know if we should go there. Um, <laughs> but um, I wish you were all in our house. This is hysterical. Okay, so true story about Long Island iced teas. When I was in college, I went to a bachelor party and it started uh, up in Syracuse and it ended with me accident accidentally is the wrong word, taking the Long Island iced tea that the bartender was making for someone else, me getting kicked out of the bar and not realizing I was kicked out for another like three years later when all my roommates were oh, like, wow. oh yeah, you we didn't just leave. Like they asked you to leave. Um, <laughs> so, and I, I mean, great. I'm not a big drinker, so it doesn't take much to, uh... all right, okay, go so, ahead and flip it back. Yep. Oh yeah, you got a nice caramelization there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh yeah. So sure. what, are the, what you're doing now, you could legitimately at home, you could turn your burner off because you are going to get residual heat from that cast iron, regardless if the burner's off or not. And it can sit here for three minutes or so, and then you let it sit, which as you know, Jason, is when you let me sit, it's going to gain about 10 degrees in temperature normally okay so let's okay. if you let it sit for 15 minutes while we're making the marsala obviously we're we're allowing the meat to sit and it's perfect by the time we're done with the marsala sauce 
So do I leave the steak in the pan, George, or do I put it somewhere else right now? No, you're going to remove it. I would suggest you put it on some type of uh, like a cutting board with a paper towel underneath uh, just so you can drain some of that excess liquid. Yep. Yep. Okay. Here. I don't know if you can. Now, are you looking for medium rare, medium, medium well? Yeah, I, I'm typically like a medium guy. Okay. 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 There we go. All right. Steak is off. So I'm going to go ahead and probably take mine off here shortly as well. But I'll wait for like another minute. I started a little bit later than you, Jason, as you know. So I'm just going to. You're good. Do what you're doing. Someone says, I wish you were at our house. This is hysterical. I hope you are having fun and learning something, friends. No, this is definitely fun. Um, okay, man. This is great. This is great. Oh, you grabbed the handle like that. You have a cover for the handle, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, good. Good. Because right now, if I held that handle, I'd burn myself pretty good. Do not do that. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah there's a great kitchen addiction is whatever that so is. So after all that steak fat's rendered, obviously cook the steak in the pan. You're going to get a lot of the flavors. Don't clean the pan, obviously. Um, yep. You're going to use a lot of the flavors from the steak for the sauce. So that's okay. super key. You would never want to wash your pan at this point. I guess I'll go ahead and remove my steaks. Actually, right here. All Looks right. good from where I'm from where I'm looking, George. Yeah. So you want a nice little char on the in the outside to be nice and pink. So that's what you want. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so I would toss in, um, where's your temperature at right now? I'm at 190. Oh, no. Go about to 350, 400. 400, happening now. Okay. And then at this point, you're going to add your butter, your mushrooms, and your garlic. Well, hold off for now. Oh, yeah. Just yep. let, it, let, it, let it get hot. Okay. And then you're going to throw in, yeah, you're going to throw in all your aromatics. Um, and then I have baby portobello mushrooms. I think you have full large portobellos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got the good ones, man. That's awesome. Oh, good. Great. I like it. I like it. So um, do you have a favorite thing to cook in the kitchen? I'm just curious. If you had you know, to cook my, something, what is your go-to? My go-to has been through COVID. And I've been doing since I'm not traveling and I'm, I'm home for dinner most nights. I'm um, cooking a little bit more. I was always gone. So Shannon sort of did a lot of the cooking. It's, it's kind of like her therapy. Uh, we're okay. getting a little bit of, here we go. Uh, I've been doing- All right, here we um, go. Now go ahead and go ahead in the butter. Hit the butter. It's gonna butter. smoke though. Watch out. When the butter comes in, toss everything in the bath, everything in the pool. So that means so the butter and what else? The mushrooms? Butter, the shallots, the garlic, the mushrooms, everything. Spinach too? No, 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 no. Spinach is at the, uh, at the end. So go okay. ahead with the butter. It's gonna Boom. smoke Butter's quite a in. bit. Yep. Portobellas in. Garlic, garlic. Shallots. Garlic is in. Shallots are in. You want time? Time? No. Nope. No nope, time. Nope, nope, nope. No time. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to stir it in. And we're going to get a little bit of caramelization on the mushrooms now, all right? Oh, yeah. Okay, friends. Hope you. Can I know you smell that. I know you going. smell it. I know you it smell it, right? So good, George. Oh yeah, yeah so it good. Smells awesome, buddy. And I'm really close to the cast iron. I'm not used to sitting down and cooking, so <laughs> it's a uh, it's a little bit different dynamic, I think. It's um, a different skill. Different skill to learn. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Oh yeah. All right. So let it. Let, I would let it ride for a little bit. Let it sit for a second. Make sure all the mushrooms are spread out. So all of them are kind of making contact with the cast iron. Yep. And then go ahead and raise your temperature. Actually, you look like your temperature is pretty, pretty solid there. I'm going to raise mine up a little bit. It's hard to tell on your screen. I know you're smoking over there. Well, I, you know what? It's, it's evaporating quickly or, or it's dissolving quickly. So maybe it's a little bit more steam than just smoke I think right you now. got more fat off of the ribeye than I did off, off the filet. So you're going to get a little bit more smoke than I would. Got it. Okay. Uh, George, what's your go-to when you're when you're home and you just need something that you love? Like, you have a favorite dish right now? 
I, I mean, it, I have so many. Um, this one's one of my favorites, super simple. Uh, shrimp scampi is another one. Uh, cedar plank salmon. Uh, I've been really getting into risotto lately. So, you know, lemon risotto is a big one for me. Uh, I don't know. I, I got, I was really into deep, de uh, Detroit style pizza for anybody that knows what Detroit style pizza is. I was getting really into that as well. So, so, uh, I think you're good for the, um, you're going to go ahead and drop your marsala in now. Okay. You get nice me... caramelization on the, uh, on the mushrooms. Yep. I'm We're just going to flip some of them. Uh, okay. flip you don't want to burn the garlic. So if you smell burnt garlic, you definitely want to add the marsala now. You want to add it now. How much marsala? I'll tell you when to stop. Oh yeah. Go ahead and stop. Done. Okay. All right. Oh, that smells so now, really good. Yeah. So what you're going to do now is basically what we're doing is reducing all that Marsala wine into the mushrooms to allow it to, uh, sorry, my Siri just turned on. That's okay. Hi Siri. All right, so you're going to reduce. Basically, when you see it reduce all the way down, Siri keeps telling me. <laughs> Siri keeps thinking you're talking to her. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why. Um, what was I saying? So reduce the Reducing. marsala down. Yep. Now, once all that's reduced, you're going to add more marsala, and you're going to do that a few times. It's going to be about five to ten minutes. We're going to be doing this back and forth. And reducing means what? So all that wine is now infusing into those mushrooms and it gets really tasty and tender because oh, if man. we just cooked the mushrooms really fast, we wouldn't get the flavor of the marsala, of the garlic, of the shallots, of the butter, of the steak fat. All of that is a must. So you got to cook it slowly. Okay. Got it. Oh, this smells really good. Now, a lot of people like to add a little bit of flour for some thickness. On my end, I don't love that. I, I do like it to be kind of more pure than to add flour. Okay. I'm going to go I'm sure with there's a lot uh, of people in the comments that are going to be critiquing me on this marsala recipe, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> this hey, is all the, me. This is not some – I mean, I don't, this might not be traditional, so don't be upset. This all I'm is saying. the GVR marsala, baby. Uh, George, tell us real quick. You just recently got engaged, correct? Yes. Yes. Tell, tell us how that been. Has that been fun? It's been amazing. Honestly, uh, not a lot of has necessarily changed, but um, not to get weird, but it's just the connection between two people. I think once it happens, it's it just becomes like you're the same. You know, I, I don't know how to put it, but I didn't think there would be this big thing. But I do feel more of a sense of connection. Uh, it's it's interesting for sure. That is great, I don't know if the man. same thing happened to you when like eventually once you got engaged or or you just knew it all along or what it was, but it was really cool. I'm going to add some more. Is that okay? That's okay. I think you're, you're good now. I think you know what you're doing. I don't want to get in your way. Beautiful. I just, I just, it just felt right. We're kind of like proposing to your fiance. Frankly, the adding more Marsala just felt right. <laughs> yeah, we did it in Arizona. It was, it was a lot of fun. Ah, oh, good for you. Did you go to Sedona? Yes. So I went to Sedona. We went to, um, Utah, we went to Zion. Uh, we had an amazing trip. It was, it was a lot of fun. That is great, buddy. So, um, so you've now reduced it twice, and yeah. you're getting to that second reduce. So usually I like to do it about three or four times. So I would okay. – I would. oh, wow, that looks really good. It does. I'll give it to you, Jason. Hey, I think George, yours is better than mine, man. I don't know. Uh, I'm doing something wrong over here, teacher. I think. All about the teaching. I'm no way. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, yes. So go ahead and add some salt and pepper. Yep. I even poured it into like little bowls as opposed to having a shaker because I felt <laughs> like if I, I feel like the professional chefs just do this. They like grab little pinches and then just kind of like <laughs> throw it in. It's definitely a TV thing for sure. People <laughs> like to gauge their salt in weird ways, I guess. Um, so how are we looking on that second reduction? Yeah, you know what? It's probably about time. You know, it probably is getting close for me to do another. 
I think your induction is better than mine. This is really kicking. There we go. I'm at 400 degrees right now, by the way. Okay. So we're almost there. I'm going to go one more time and I'm going to get really hot. So these mushrooms cook a little bit faster. All right. Oh yeah. Oh man. When you're reducing a liquid, are you always mm. reducing it into something else? Like the wine is reducing into the, into the mushrooms right now? 100%. So let's say we were making, uh, you know, if I was making like shrimp scampi or something like that, it would just be butter, white wine reduction, garlic, um, same situation with shrimp. So it'd be a lot faster cause you'll overcook the shrimp. Um, but it, it's a simple, a very similar reduction. Once you figure out how to make a sauce, whether it's a scampi sauce, a marsala, um, anything like that, then yep. it, it just makes everything a lot more flavorful. Awesome. It's fun to jazz up a steak a little bit, you know? Yeah. Okay. So what was on the menu uh, last night? What was, last what's the night? average menu? Yes. Last night we had um, hash. So I did Italian sausage, eggs, okay. and sweet potatoes. Oh, um, nice. Kind of all. It, it is like our favorite. Then I throw some Cholula in. Not everybody else loves Ooh. Cholula here, but but I like it with some Cholula. And then a little salt and pepper. So that was fun. And then um, I'm trying to think. We had chicken. Like a, we're, We've been doing these ch lots of chicken bowls, different kinds of chicken okay. with we did like green salsa, ch chili verde, I guess, or salsa verde, and uh, some beans, black beans, cilantro, rice. It was great the night before, I think. Okay, I'm smoking again. I think I'm starting to get too you hot. Want me to, you want me to throw a little bit more in? Yeah, go throw it. This will be your last one. So throw, throw, here, I'll tell you when to stop on this one. Oh, yeah. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. There you go. I really want you to get this last one good. Great. So you cook those mushrooms through. Looks good. So now we're pretty much, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, man. It's almost like soup right now. Yeah. So it's going to come down, though. And now go ahead. And this is another thing that I'm going to get critiqued on. Um, okay. But, <laughs> That's all right. But uh, add a little bit of balsamic. I like to add a little vinegar to mine. Um, so I'm just going to add a, a few drops in there. Okay. I'm going to follow your lead. Whoop. There we you'll, go. You'll start, to, you'll start to smell that a little bit. Oh, yeah. And then as you – you still have a good amount of marsala in there, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and grab your cream. Yep. And just add just slightly, just a little bit, oh, maybe a uh, tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, right? Oh, oh, there you go. You're good. You're good. And then after that, go ahead and grab your thyme. Oh, yeah. You throw your thyme in there. How much, by the way? Uh, I, it really doesn't matter. Much. It doesn't okay. matter. It's not, it's really just for the flavor. You're not going to be necessarily eating the thyme. You're actually going to scoop the thyme out once we're done here. It's just getting that, those herbs in there and getting that flavor from the thyme. Oh, it smells so good. You still got a good amount of rosal on there, right? Correct. All right. I'm at I 330 degrees, by the way. Perfect. That works perfect. And again, we did not test this recipe together, so. No, we <laughs> did <we're>... not. <laughs> George, if you were given someone who knew, uh, like me, who knows very little about cooking, uh, if they wanted to start diving in and learning, is there a place you would encourage someone to start or start learning or anything in I particular? Would just start, I would just start cooking. Um, I learned because I used to literally make things when I was 13 or 14, hated it. Yeah. And would get so frustrated, I would throw it away. 
And that's not good. And I get that, <laughs> but it, it was one of those things where I wanted to critique everything I cooked and that's kind of how I did it. But yeah, I would just start cooking. I would just start, um, you know, there's so many recipes. The internet's crazy good with, with all these recipes, but I would add any type of recipe that you're going to read off the internet. I would add a little bit of your own into it, which makes okay. it a little bit more fun. Yeah. I love it. One of our uh, buddies, Pete Anginen, said he likes to cook, but he doesn't like to follow recipes. And Yeah, uh, no, I totally understand that. So my marsala is pretty much done. Okay. I think mine is too. So we could either add the spin or add spinach in, or we could take the – let's just go ahead and add spinach in. Okay. I usually remove the sauce and then add spinach later, but we'll, we'll be fine. How's this look? Good amount? Good amount. Good amount. As you know, with spinach, it tends to disappear once you cook it. Yeah. Okay. So just fold that in. Yep. Trying to get some temperature. And if you notice that you're a little bit dry, yep. and you're drying up a little bit, go ahead yep. and add a little bit more marsala. Yep. That's all. And then turn it back up. I'm going to stand she, up here. There she goes. Oh, George, that's looking good. You, you might have thrown in a little more. Uh, no, I think no it's okay. going to start coming down. It's going to start coming down. Got it, got it. I was thinking that maybe I should put in more. No, no, you should be fine. Oh, yeah. What was the temperature like in Florida today? Is it like nice enough that you can go out and be on a beach and enjoy it? Oh, yeah. I took a run today outside with my T-shirt. I mean, I yeah, it's 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 beautiful. It's 71 degrees out. Nice. All right. I'm done here, man. I am trying to turn my burner off. Here you go. What do you think about that? Perfect. Beautiful, Jason. For your first time making this, beautiful. Okay, I think I just turned it off. If, uh... Oh, yeah, looking good. Uh, let's see. Shannon's asking, why does mine look so much? Shannon, I didn't burn it. I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Man, it smells great. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and plate it up. I just sliced mine a little bit. What are you doing? So I sliced my steak up. I would slice it up um, about a quarter inch. Okay, hold on here. Let's flip this over. I'm gonna go ahead and plate it. See right here, I just sliced it up. Oh yeah. And I'm just going to top it with some of the mushrooms and the spinach and all the goodness. I'm actually gonna get a spoon. That's the one thing I forgot. One second. See here. I don't know how my my cutting skills look, frankly. There we go. Okay, we're cutting away here. Okay. Here's how we're looking in terms of the meat. I like it. That's yeah, it's got some, that's it's got some good you, right? pink inside. Yep, looks great. Oh, yeah. Looks great. That's perfect medium. Okay. Now, we're going to take right on top. Yeah. Let's I'm move. Back. Back. Here, hold on. Let me put that uh, there for a second. Let me... 
move the induction stove. And then we'll put our plate right here. And let's see if we can do this. With as much sauce as you can. Oh, mercy. That sauce is going to be on the floor. All right, George. All right, friends. Man, that looks awesome, buddy. You're looking good. This looks so good. Okay. Fork. Fork jar. Is it time to eat? Oh, yeah. We got to check a bite. Nice and sweet. Mushrooms Man. are nice and tender. Steak is cooked nicely. Oh my god! Good, right? Look at you go! Look at you! This is <laughs> <laughs> this is like the, the the best tasting thing that has ever come from the, these hands. And frankly, it's because it came from you, George, putting it no. into these hands. Um, I love it. That was that is incredible, man. I'm glad you like it. I really am. It makes me oh. so happy. I get so I get such a kick out of when people like just love the cook the uh, the food they cook. So, oh, it is so so good. I'm gonna get another. Let me take a little bit more. Next, the portabella with the steak. I don't even like mushrooms either. And I make this all the time. Man, um, do this with more mushrooms and spinach if you didn't want to eat red meat. Out like for anyone out there uh, that didn't want to do that, you can. Yeah. To just make mushrooms, spinach, um, you know, so that's also an option. Great. Uh, someone saying, good job, fellas. Thank you, friend. I wish I could see who you are, but that's okay. Um, George, listen, I, uh, I want to thank you. You are a blast. You're a fun community member contributor. You've got great talent. I love that this is how your creativity comes out. And frankly, it's a gift to us. It's a gift to me and, you know, to the whole community. So I appreciate you sharing it with us. Well, thank you for having me. Honestly, it's been a lot of fun following you. And uh, hopefully Shannon gets a little bit out of that. Oh, she, she will get some. Oh, yeah. She's going <laughs> to love it. I'm sure the kids are going to start like, you know, like vultures just coming over and stealing little bits. There comes one right now. Um, so listen, thanks a lot. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, I know you're staying home, I think, and, and you know, um, I don't know. We're, I'm glad that we're all still doing it together, even though it feels different this year. And this is one of those ways that we still get to connect, even though far apart. So, yeah, 100%, 100%. So, um, yeah. Food service power plant, friends. Remember, the in the notes for tonight and in the event was the recipe for this. So you can go back, watch through. If you want to cook this, have a blast. Do it under a hood um is what i would encourage you to if i weren't using the induction stove right here then i would have done it on our hood but do that and um you know listen we'll keep doing some fun things to either learn new culinary skills or fun things to just pick up your game and creativity and tr try something new if this isn't something you're super familiar with like me in the kitchen so um we're wishing everyone the best this thanksgiving i might even i'm contemplating just coming on for an hour if anybody wants to during thanksgiving to connect and um, if, if you're kind of alone for Thanksgiving or you're missing some family, maybe we'll I'll find three minutes or something that we can come on and people can connect if that sounds fun I to you. That, I think that would be really cool. Um, my dad used to do a thing where everyone would hold hands in a circle in my family and we'd say what we're thankful for uh, oh. before we would eat. So that would be kind of a cool dynamic. If you hopped on, everyone said something they're thankful for and, and kind of to show that. Really, That's good. a cool idea. I love yeah. it. Tell us one thing you're thankful for before we let you go. I'm thankful for everybody watching. And I'm thankful you got something out of it. I really am. I'm super pumped. I hope you liked it. I think that was sincere. I think it was. It is so good. It's truly the <laughs> best the best meal that I've ever made in my life in 42 years. Um, and to your point, like it wasn't, as long as someone's guiding me through it, it's not that difficult. I feel like I could make it again. And so it'd be fun to keep trying some of these with you and other chefs in the community to try new things and realize that things so often for me, things seem 
so much bigger than they are. And I shy away from them because I'm afraid of them. And then you try it and you're like, wait a minute, that, that wasn't that hard. I can do that. We can figure this out and learn it. So it's um, all in the prep. honestly, it's all in the prep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was, yeah. uh, yeah. Having that ready was huge. Josh Callahan's on. He says, yum, Josh, uh, maybe someday you and I will make this together, buddy. That would be a blast. Everyone, uh, remember, keep cheering yourself on. We know it's a unique time. Give yourself a pat on the back. Try flex that creative muscle, whatever it is in you, whether it's cooking, whether it's writing or painting or drawing. I don't know what that thing is. I find a way to contribute to give. Flex that creativity muscle. Continue to practice this week of gratitude. Remember, thankfulness and gratitude is not circumstance specific. So we get that things look different this year. It's learning how to be grateful in the harder moments of life. That's where you practice it and you build that muscle so that you end up, you know, weeks and months later, just inherently finding things to be grateful for. You, you, uh, you what you focus on, you get more of. So do that. Everybody have a great night, George. Thanks again, brother. We'll see you again soon. We'll do this. Everybody, lots of love. Be well. See you soon from Service Power Plant. Bye. See you guys. Thanks.